How is it going everybody? My name is Copyright and welcome to another episode of What If? And today we are gonna look of a suggestion from Dopey Dopes. Um, it was definitely an interesting one and if you don't know how What If uh, series works, go check out my previous video on What If Mono Y didn't have a tree drop. You can basically just think about it as what is the most common thing people say about some archetypes or some decks and then think about what if we exclude it, so what if we take it out. And today, as I said, is a suggestion from Dopey Dopes and he said what if Mono Green didn't have Blizzard Brawl and I thought, okay, what if Mono Green didn't have Snow? <laughs> and this is when we are gonna look today how will this deck will perform in the ladder if Mono Green will lose Snow Permanence or Snow Ability and of course one of the best cards in current standard Blizzard Brawl uh, one mana fight spell um, and this is the list I come up with uh, through different let's say adaptation of different lists from World Cup but also from all the current tournaments that were played and I just try to exclude all these snow things that help us for example Sculpture of Winter um, who is a really really important let's say archetype or piece of the archetype of Snowlands because a lot of people think oh it's just a mana acceleration no, it's not. Um, Sculpture of Winter, who does know? I will show it to you here. Here we have it. Sculpture of Winter is not only an acceleration, he also gives you the ability to use Blizzard Brawl on turn 2, because Sculpture of Winter is an elf rook, a snow creature, and this counts towards snow permanent that Blizzard Brawl needs 3 of to, be, uh, to give your creature indestructible and plus 1 plus 0, right? Um, so otherwise it would be just a fight spell for one that is also really good but uh, this Sculpture of Winter has the main purpose of course give you this another snow permanent and give you the acceleration and can untap uh, a, a, a land so accelerate you in mana base. So this is basically why the Sculpture of Winter is so important. Um, I didn't try to replace him uh, uh, except I, uh, instead I tried to replace the Blizzard Brawl a little bit more and you see maybe here in one drop uh, we have Snake Servile, I added one more, usually the most decks run two of them, I run three because the matter currently is a lot of bounce or interaction with your board without specifically killing the creature but maybe just to slow you down enough and uh, green decks definitely suffer from it because if you play something like Kazandu Mammoth or Old Drawn Troll um, and they get bounce, you need to reinvest again mana in it so at the end you spend uh, two turns and six mana for just uh, basically nothing and the opponent fading hoped it. So this is why I thought uh, Snake Star Whale is a really really good addition. Um, then we have of course our um, uh, Blight Blade and because I want to go with this build fully against creature matchups, right? I'm not looking to win against is it or something else because if they have a good hand if they start with a good instant and sorcery spell collection in their hand it's really difficult to win we basically need to hope to have our oddity maybe something with haste um ranger class yeah we divide by zero again ranger class it was really good uh, against control but now we divide by zero if you invest so much mana to level three that you can constantly play creatures um they just bounce it away and you basically lost uh, what is it, 4, uh, three, 7 mana, right? So you, you lose 7 mana and they invest only 3 mana, so you basically lose it there. Yeah, um, this is so far the um, inclusions. What else I took is, here I split it in two, you see maybe description of Abundance 2 of, and here another card that often is sideboarded against creature matchups in best of 3, but we of course play Blaze of 1, it's uh, Devouring 10, dri 10 Drills. A 2 mana sorcery from... Um, Strix in Heaven, I think it's at the extension, yeah. Um, and it says target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker, and this is why I decided to take it, because we can also deal with maybe some planeswalker. Um, you don't control. When the permanent you don't control dies, this turn you gain two life. So against creature matchups, again, two life can be crucial, especially against mono white, where literally each life is uh, decisive. If they have um, um, evasive creatures, like flying creatures, it can uh, means, um, yeah, uh, win or lose, right? These two life can be enough for Elite Spellbinder to survive the turn or to be dead to Elite Spellbinder. Yeah, the rest is basically the basic mono green list, you know, and uh, I didn't include this uh, one mana new wolf that added because I think with Crimson Vow, green didn't get better. I think also with Crimson Vow, green got worse if you include the cards from Crimson Vow. The only addition I think that is 
uh, pretty good is the audit team people compared with question beast questioning beast no questioning beast was so much more much 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 more uh, of course being unable to uh, being blocked by creatures small creatures also having death touch to trade against bigger threat um, of course the oddity is not on the same level but uh, it adds to the deck something that it was maybe missing it was this fast 3-4 uh, like turn 3 turn 4 punch so you can um, really deal around 11-12 damage on turn 4 with oddity if you play it on curve uh, so this is also really really nice so this wolf I will not include it I have 3 of it but I like we run what uh, currently here 8 uh, drops that are bigger than 4 right so to have something that uh, profits from the pack leader ascendant pack leader gets bigger if you play something with a uh, mana value four or greater or if he comes with an additional one one counter if you have something with mana value four or greater i think he is not a good inclusion in mono white deck or mono green i'm sorry mono green deck and uh just uh let's say weaken your 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 green decks um this is why this list has almost nothing of new cards except our oddity of course and yeah honorable mentions maybe i would also say and this is of course here a liberator great great tool to deal with uh, enchantments and artifacts uh, but we have here so we are so heavy in two mana slots so i decided to exclude him and go with the death touch creature um then of course angle to deal with the flyers and artifacts uh, this is a nice uh, combat trick or spell, an instant that can deal with flying creatures, but also maybe double the power and toughness of Oddity, and it can be a 10-10 easily, uh, because if we grow it with Ranger class, for example, or with Inscription of Abundance, uh, we double its power and toughness. Um, Toski for card draw, of course, is really nice, uh, but again, bounce spells are the main problem why Toski is not played. Uh, for Gimot, Against creature matchups, again, also a really nice uh, inclusion, maybe. And uh, Caretaker, a little bit too expensive, but I think if matter develops a little bit further to being a little bit slower, a little bit mid rangey Caretaker will definitely shine a lot. So, without further ado, I hope this deck is clear. We run all together uh, 21 lands, but we have, of course, Kazandu Mammoth and uh, Tangelet um, here as our, let's say, mana compensation, but also uh, Jasper Sentinel can provide us with a little bit of RAM. This is so far for the deck, guys. Let's jump right into the games, see how this deck will perform without snow, and uh, maybe it's something will surprise us. Our first opponent, a Khan. Chingis. Um... Yeah, looks nice, looks nice. We have definitely Chariot, we can also maybe combine with something early. Um, the jury is okay against creatures, so let's try it. And we open up with our Liar, of course. Not a big fan of Liar, but a lot of pro players and a lot of tournament lists include Liar. This is why I thought, hey, why not, right? And we go in. This allows us to play Cherry on Tree. Because we can now play Sentinel and protect it with our Snakes or Whale. Okay, Ranger class is not the worst we can face. Oh, another Chariot even. I will be thrilled if we draw now the... The Vren and Salmon Branchik. The Branchik will definitely be the nail in the coffin. Okay, opponent with tracker interesting so let's see now what we do um tracker is a tree so i don't want to attack with my kitties right or do i attack with my kitties to force maybe a trade somewhere and basically i think i do right i do i play mammoth out then i play the land Crew the chariot with my mammoth, and I wanna start getting in. Wanna be aggressive, and this way we can maybe even, even maybe save something. But I wanna actually keep the snakes and wheel for something bigger. Okay, let's try it. This way we have a bigger board than our opponent, and he goes. <laughs> Ah, mono green, mono green. And our opponent was playing mono green snow. Mono green snow and uh, with the weird token that is bucked. But uh, yeah, let's check out another one. Zor. 
Ruyo. Ruyo. Our second game with our what if deck. And this is actually a terrible hand. Uh, one land, tap land, two. I mean, we are really, really slow and we are also on the go. So I don't want to keep these slow hands on the go. This looks much, much better. Uh, turn one, turn two, turn three. Some fighting spirits here. And let's open up. Snakes and Whale will be a little bit better. I will feel more confident, especially now against Mono White. And we play our hand out as much as we can. Get faster on the board. Opponent maybe will portable hole my werewolf. Sun Gold Sentinel. Okay, my opponent is definitely an exile spell. Um, thing, thingy Boombi. And how do we do it here? Interesting approach, right? I mean, I can play all grown throne, but I think this turn will be wasted because he will play next turn um, Lumina Aspirant. The thing is, I also think he has Elite Spellbinder because usually Mono White lists through on these things. So if he Elite Spellbinder, my. Um, how you call it? My chariot, it will be maybe painful. So maybe I want him to play. Um, Brutal Qatar or something like this, right? Something on turn 3 that exiles. I can also alternatively go in, but then he will exile and then I will lose everything, right? So, okay, let's see, let's see. Um, no. No, 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 no. I want to force my opponent to exile something and maybe this way we can get more value out of our pack leader. With ha card draw. Definitely a little bit unlucky that we didn't have snakes or whale in the hand. This will be a bone breaker against mono white. Okay, you see Skyclef Apparition and most likely all control. Now, if we draw another land, Jessica will be really nice. Okay, Odity is not the biggest thing that I wanted to draw. But, here comes the but. Uh, we skip this turn. We do nothing. Then turn next turn he play a little spellbinder. So let's let's just chill, right? Let's just chill. If opponent depends what he does, I want to I want to fight with pack leader the Skycliff apparition. A little spellbinder will most likely come in, and before he comes in, I will fight it, of course. This way we have a little bit more card draw next time. Okay, Lumi is not bad, actually. Another Lumi, Jesus. Let's see where he wants to put the counters on. Every counter on you, okay. Okay. Next turn. Okay, he goes in, this is okay. I'm not mad about it. We are not blocking it. And now we are looking for the fight. We're gonna fight the apparition, get our tree tree back and provoke the card draw for the next turn. Okay, another pack leader is okay. So let's, I think, first go in for six. Oddity. Oddity is not the best draw I could hit, but okay. And then let's go with our pack leader and we put. Ah, we don't even need to put the upkeep stop because, um, or the stops because our sentinels will keep it off. So let's see what my opponent do now. He can maybe still exile Adeline. Okay, Adeline is a problem. Not for Oddity, but is a problem. Kabira's takedown. Okay. Four damage to Kabira. Lumi and Lumi. Okay, I hope you are not planning to attack me with both of them. He does, okay. And this is definitely something I can take the trait of. Pass. One, two. Kill one of you. A little bit unlucky currently with the land draw. Okay, this is also not a really a land. 
this is annoying. This is definitely annoying. So if I play you tapped, it's nothing. If I play you as a creature, it's also nothing. So what are we hoping to do? Um, I think I need to attack, right? Otherwise I'm... Okay, Jesus. Game. Okay, opponent was scared. This is actually really good. Um, five, six, seven. If I don't play this one as a creature, I'm dead anyway, right? Okay, let's play you as a creature. And we end the turn. Unlucky that we didn't draw any lands. That we... Uh, how many... Oh, okay. Good game. It's good game. It's good game. That we didn't draw... Oh no, it's not a good game. My sentinel can still block him, right? Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. I think... <gasps> Two, three, seven. Exile. Are we dead? I think so, right? But... Two, three, four, five? No, we are not. One. Two. This is 4 damage that I'm taking, right? Can I block differently? No, right? 6, 7, no. If we draw a land, does it change something? Not really, right? What should... What, what can we draw that will give us the upper hand? Um, draw a land. Or one. It's also not enough. This is such a bullshit. Huh? One land. One land was missing to do anything. Or one. I mean, okay, she has. She has. Uh, she has vigilance anyway, and here comes the land. Okay. Ay, 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 ay. Unlucky. Unlucky, Rio. Good game. Good game, good game. Let him finish me. We don't need to be like this. Oh, bro. <laughs> it's okay. I know. I know you have other exile spells. Okay. Uh, okay. Da da. Rio. At least the uh, line has a first strike. A little bit faster, right? Grahamatan or Grahamatan. Uh, whatever. And this hand looks actually okay. -ish. Right, one, two. We keep up snakes and whale. Maybe land. Maybe creature. Sure. I like it, I like it. Opponent mulligans. On the draw he can mulligan at least once. This is okay, he has an additional card draw. So it's not the worst to mulligan on the on the draw. On the play it's a little bit more painful, right? Because you don't have the draw step. So you need to do something with your six cards. Okay, against again mono white. Mono white is the Let's say most difficult matchup you can uh, you can have with with mono green, but at least here in this matchup we draw our lands. And portable home was the perfect solution for my opponent, and this time we are gonna level you up. Attack. Let's see if he wants. He doesn't, okay. He has Brutal Qatar most likely, so this is why we keep up the Snakes and Veil. Lumi is okay. Uh, I don't know if he is going to race me, or if he wants to race me. Okay, take it. My turn. Okay, another one of you. We play you as a land, we play you as a creature. Because I want to keep up my Snakes and Veil still open. Because I think this race, I'm gonna win 
before him. Also because I was in the play, of course. But let's see, let's see. Skycliff Apparition on, on Ranger class? Oh no, he can, just creatures. Oh no, he can. Okay, sure. Take away my Ranger class. Put some counters, Kraro. Okay. Sure. I could combo trick the Spiron, maybe my mistake, but I think he still has a lot of Excel and I want to keep my old ground troll um, ready. Okay. Um, old ground troll. And we go face. Yep, yep, yep. And play you. Brutal Qatar on my old ground troll. We are gonna prevent it, of course. And this is, I think, the nail. Yeah, you can attack with it. Five damage. No blocks. My turn. And now we're gonna play Oreti. And then we are going in with you. You. This is lethal. This is lethal. If he has an exile spell. So he blocks everything, right? He blocks him. He blocks here. But then if he has an exile spell, he can exile Sentinel and kill me with the Sun Gold. This is why we're just gonna go with you two. See what our opponent gonna do. Because he is forced to block. They are both lethal. Okay. Not the worst. Okay. Let's see what our opponent is gonna do now. Talia is okay. I'm not scared of Talia. Initiate is okay. Okay. Pawn don't want to do anything in this case. Then we are going to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Wait, we pay 1 and then 1, 2, 4, right? No. 4, 4. We can even go for six, but then I need to tap some, or for five, but then I need to tap something. I go you, you, one, two. Right, he blocks here, here, right? One comes true. He blocks here, here. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it like this. Okay. Okay. Bro, you give me another creature, you know that, right? Okay. I will block with the initiate, to be honest. Okay, let's put it on the land. And with all ground troll, I was always a hundred percent sure that he is with snow permanence. Okay. My opponent and Asha, okay. I can still play all of them. And we are gonna do it like this, so we can maybe sacrifice the land. Next. You and you. And, okay. This is smarter. But I'm gonna kill still you. And now what our opponent needs to draw, I don't even know what he can draw to win this game. But I think it was a pretty good game from us. Skycliff. Okay. And now before he exiles, we can use the mana from our Sentinel to create a token. It's basically the best draw he could have. Okay, this is this is that. This is dead. 
So we use the mana here and then we kill it. So yeah, um, I think this is so far enough. Three games I think is a good representation. Um, and you see definitely the deck is capable to, to, to win without snow. Is it better though? I don't think so. Uh, Blizzard Bowl is just uh, too good of a card. Also, if the snow permanents are maybe not even there, if you have bigger creatures, you can still fight with it, right? So it's one mana uh, fight spell. And uh, yeah, I think this will be playable also without snow. Of course, you won't have much more um, success with the snow permanents and uh, just uh, being more consistent. But uh, I like how it came out. I like uh, how we played, especially we played two games against Mono White and Mono White is the biggest enemy of Mono Green. This is why a lot of people play, because Mono White is good against Easy and good against uh, Mono Green. This version uh, especially is more creature based, this Mono White version, but previous version that we faced uh, was uh, like a, some sort of exile mix pile. Um, so yeah, I think this shows definitely that Mono Green is capable of winning. We, what, we played three games, won two, lost one, and we played against uh, our let's say, hardest opponents against Mono White and one game against Mono Green, Snow. <laughs> so yeah, maybe it's even better, I don't know. You are here to judge, you decide is it better without the Snow or not. I think it's not better, but it's definitely more interesting. The, the, the sequences are more different than uh, like everybody knows, oh, Blizzard Brawl come here, oh, Snake Server come here. Here is the opponent, maybe a little bit more surprised. But yeah, um, so far for this uh, episode of What If. If you have any suggestions, let me know down in the comments. You can also join my Discord server. Uh, let me know there if you would like to see some other decks with What If. And if I come with other ideas for What If uh, myself, I of course will continue doing it because it's really fun uh, to make them really interesting to look up some different lists without the cards that are uh, commonly used and yeah i hope you enjoyed it and uh, i see you in the next one ciao